We're going to show you how we modify. For higher horsepower, we make power here. Hey, shut up. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> I'm walking into high tech exhaust, Hi, which is Jay. owned by John Graditsky. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. Welcome back to the channel. I'm walking into high tech exhaust, which is owned by John Graditsky, and we're going to be building an iconic motor, the B18 C5. But this motor has an interesting history. Let's see what John has to say about it. So, John, what's the story behind this B18 C5? Uh, 15 years ago, a client of mine came to me. He was racing his Type R and had an issue and kicked the rod out the side. So he brought me the motor. We uh, took it all apart and we determined that it only needed a short block. So I went to Tustin Acura, bought a B18C5 short block, and then proceeded to put it all back together um, because in his class, he has to run basically stock parts. So the motor sat here for 15 years, never picked it up. So do you guys think that we can make this B18 C5 even better than stock? Leave your answers in the comments. This video series is gonna show how high tech improves the performance of a B18 C5 RDOT motor. Subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss any episodes in this video series. In episode one, we're gonna show you how we modify the PR3 head to handle higher RPMs and to provide better flow, which means higher horsepower and better torque. Let's get started. Okay guys, check this out. This is a tape wire head and it has been vapor honed. It's also poured and polished. Check out those beautiful intake ports. And we've got it all cleaned up. And we're also gonna be installing a whole bunch of SuperTech stuff. So you've got your valve springs, new OEM valve seals. You've got your spring bases, your retainers, brand new O-ring, keepers from SuperTech, and all valves are SuperTech as well. And again, this is for a Type R build that I'm doing here at High Tech. Okay, let's first install these spring seats. There we go. These have all been lubricated. Today we are using the Acrolein Childs. Make sure those guys sit down nice and flat. Okay, now we're gonna slip in some valves. I've taken all these valves and these are lubricated with Acrolein Childs. And I'm just gonna flip this guy up and I'm gonna start installing these things. Now we're gonna stick in the intake. Okay, let's put these exhaust guys on. And I lubricated the tops of the valves already, again with Acrolein Childs. We're only gonna work on the exhaust side right now. And the exhaust side are these guys. They have a black spring. Let's put these guys on, nice and carefully. Okay, black, 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 black. So now we're gonna be using this custom tool that we've got right here, and we're just gonna work on the exhaust, and we're just gonna place this guy right on there, and we're gonna give it a good whack. It'll change timbre once it strikes the bottom. You heard it right there. And I always give it one extra hit. Okay, let's switch around and we'll do the intake. So these have a silver spring on them. And again, the tops of these valves have all been lubricated with Acrolein Childs. And we do that so that way we don't rip the valve seal when it goes on. A couple more here. And before you push these things on, you want to verify that the spring color is correct. Spring color, spring color, spring, 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 the white ones, or they're non-colored, whatever. The other ones are black. Position, listen for the timbre.
and the valve seals are installed. Let's take a look. Let's see what we did right here. Here's the intakes. And the valves are down just a little bit, so I'll push them through in a second. But I will show you guys what the bottom looks like. This is the exhaust side. And again, those are the black springs. Here is the bottom of the head. So let's push these valves all the way down. Notice they're all numbered. There we go. She's beautiful. All right, let's add our springs. These are all super tech. And then we're gonna add some retainers on top of each one of these guys. Let's lube these guys up. Before we get started, I wanna show you how keepers work. So this is a valve and this is a keeper right here. So what happens is this keeper actually gets stuck on here just like that. So there's a little groove at the very end right there. And then there's also a little protrusion in the keeper and that protrusion fits in that groove. And you can see that stops it right there. So there's one on each side. So there's actually two that go on here. You can see that. And then, so here's what the, here's what it would look like in the retainer. See, there's two of them in there and that's what it sits. So let me pull out a retainer. Here's the retainer. This guy pops up through the retainer and then there's a keeper on each side. So the keeper is attached like that. That's what the keepers look like. And then the retainer slides in like this and look. So it's the keepers that hold the spring down. The springs will be within here. And so that's what we're trying to do. Okay, it's time to put some keepers in. So we're gonna be using this tool right here. It's the Euro Export and it is a valve spring compressor. So check this thing out. I'll put it all together for you guys. Okay, all you do is you place the tool on here and then you're gonna take some M8 bolts and these I'm just gonna put down hand tight. No need to put the Kung Fu grip on them. Just put this hand down. And then we're gonna put the basket in here and then we're gonna roll this guy down. So that way it puts a little tension or some compression on the spring. Lift this guy up, push the valve up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this guy down just a little bit and it'll compress the spring. It exposes the top of the valve. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this stuff and we're gonna use it as a glue, both on the inside and on the back of our keeper. And then we're gonna place that right in here. Position it, you can put it around like that too. Take another one, do the same thing. Add some glue to this side and some glue for this side. And she's ready to go in. Let's see if those things are positioned properly. If they are, we can back this guy out. And voila, check that guy out. We'll just scrape that off, do a little quick inspection, make sure that the keepers are seating properly, and that's money. Now we gotta do that on the rest of them. It usually takes me 30 minutes to do a B-series keeper installation. If you'd like to see this process a little more in detail, check out this video and I'll put the link in the description. Let's get back to the results. All right, so let's take a look at what we did with the Type R head. You could check out all of the valves are installed with the keepers and the retainers. Everything looks really nice. And again, these are all SuperTech valves, springs, retainers, and keepers as well. So that's looking pretty good. Let's look at the bottom of the head as well. And here's the bottom of the head looking pretty sexy and all the valves are in place. This is the first video in this series and I'm getting excited. 
Thanks so much for hanging out with me and geeking out. Next time, we're going to be tackling the bottom end of this epic engine, and we're going to be talking about some cool stuff that John's super passionate about. We'll be diving into internal combustion theory that John's been working on for decades, including flamethrow, homogeneous atomization and burn, and tech that didn't exist during the B18C5 era, but has changed modern engines today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash that notification button. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless, and I'll see you on the track.